pilot project, a test project, to adopt a plot and take care of it. Anne Marie Rundfola is the Earth Mother of the Bronx River Alliance. And come out many times. So I'm going to talk to some teachers from the South Bronx who are working with the museum and who will also be working with us at the Bronx River Alliance. So she's not only very dynamic, she's she gets things done, but she also really understands what kids like and what they're capable of doing. Remember what it starts with a J. Yes, Japanese not weed. And the crew hears that word all the time. Wait a second. Yeah. It's called Ono because the dads are. I think that the reason they're able to remember those complicated Latin terms and scientific concepts is because it's real to them. Put your foot on the soft, soft, soft pedal. Don't make any noise. I remember when I was 10, everybody sang back then. Now it's not considered important anymore, but 20 or 30 years ago, it was a mainstay of every school. Put your foot on the loud, loud, loud pedal. Singing made you feel good about yourself. So, remembering that, this year I decided to teach my students a few songs. Okay, that's my breast. So I have to go this way and measure. Dr. Maxo. <laughs> a parameter must not change if you want to use a parameter. When you're measuring something, that thing must not change. Mexo is the site manager for the River Projects, and he's a scientist. And like Anne-Marie, he's good with kids. And he has a talent for making scientific concepts palatable for children. Oh, the parents. you got to have the parents. you got to get them involved. Sorry. Parameter, what, what's the meaning again? Let's say you are observing something or you are measuring something. And this year I have very supportive parents. I don't know what I would do without them. <laughs> there are no windows in my classroom. So a trip to the Bronx River is a very pleasant and liberating experience for these kids. Well, hi! There are some things also that you can't learn. Uh, in the classroom that you you really have to be outside in order to learn it. Yo, why you staring at Catherine? Because they both got the same eyes. Could I go cut his head? I know you like. But please remember, any little animals you find, leave them. This is their home. He wants to hide his tail because he's afraid right now. The Bronx is a real river because it runs through the Bronx and other, um, and Westchester and other, um, other, like, two cities and communities. The river is over here. <laughs> the Bronx River is, it's like a long river. It flows to the south. They've obviously had very good teachers before me who have taught them to ask those probing questions. People leave lots of bottles and that's, 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 that's making the river a little dirty. And I'm here to see the Bronx River, make them clean, make it a better place. Today we are visiting the Bronx River to see how we can make it a better place, to see how we can keep it so everybody can come down here with their families, their friends. When it rains, if let's say if we got two inches last night or an inch, it rises by about three feet or maybe four. It's like a turret. These areas were very shallow, and this area is about eight feet. Eight feet deep. It all depends. We work for a nonprofit organization called the Bronx River Alliance. We're affiliated with parks, with, and uh, we also do, we get together with all the environmental groups also. I'm working on maybe different sites like North Brother Island and other places to fix um, saltwater marshes around the Sound, Jamaica Bay. At the Bronx River, we're trying, to, we're trying to restore it and clean it up from all the garbage and restore the banks from erosion. Also try to control back the invasive species like the knotweed, you see it growing all around. And the knotweed and the Phragmites is one of big problem down here. We're trying to get rid of them. 
They don't give, um, they don't let other native species uh, hold on to the soil. They just grab onto the light and everything below them dies. The knotweed is really an invasive plant. Well, as we, as the water quality gets better, as the banks build up and we plant more trees, more wildlife will start coming in because the wildlife depends on the native trees. They already have built a relationship throughout years and eons with the native trees. So if they don't find native plants over here that provide them their berries and what they like for habitat, they're not gonna be here in the forest. They're not used to being with knotweed. They haven't been with knotweed for, for years. Knotweed only been here like 100 years. So they don't have a relationship with these other plants. They only have a relationship with the plants that have been here for a long time. So that's what we're trying to bring back into this, into this forest, trying to restore the river, the banks, and the, and the trees, cut down on the evasive plants. So plants and the water quality, the air quality could get, get a lot better here in the Bronx. <laughs> I'm making my hood beautiful. I usually do lessons in class that lead up to what we're doing in the field. Uh, I also give them worksheets so that each outing we do is something like a scavenger hunt. This GPS helps us to do a bunch of things. First, when we are plotting this place, this GPS helps us to map the plot, to put the plot on the map. Those are very important tools today, which did not exist 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, Mrs. Gonzalez is very good on, on doing maps. And then I'm sure she's going to put a nice map all together for us. And I plan to try and teach kids about those skills. And eventually we'll get software so that they can generate the maps themselves. We have three layers, <coughs> three layers of plants we're going to deal with here. The bottom one, the grass one, we call that herbaceous, okay? Or you can call it ground cover, ground cover. That's the top, that's the, the lowest one, close to the ground, ground cover or herbaceous. The second one will be the shrub layer. The shrub layer, we're talking about things like that, okay? Right over there, not too tall. The difference between a shrub and a tree is the tree has a man, a man, a man what? A man, a man trough, perfect. Before I became a New York City teaching fellow, I was involved with the Bronx River projects. I went there to help clean up and enjoy the calmness of the river. And then when I got to know my students this year, I realized that I had been blessed with some extraordinarily talented boys and girls. <laughs> Three ways of plotting is, one, to find an area, to measure the size, and to see how many plants can fit there. DBH is diameter, breast, and height. I attended several Bronx River Alliance seminars with the idea of setting up a project for them to do. Next time when you come, I'll teach you more about soil testing, a little bit more about what you're looking for when you are testing the soil. You know, in education today, we're striving to get students to understand the big ideas, not just lists of facts. Projects like this one are perfect opportunities to teach high-level thinking skills. Put your foot on the soft, soft, soft pedal. Don't make any noise. Somebody here who deserves a medal. And it's for our choice. Here's Mrs. Rumble on the cheese to Put your foot on the soft, soft, soft pedal. Don't make any noise. Put your foot on the loud, loud, loud pedal. Let's make lots of noise. Cause there's somebody here who deserves a medal. And it's for our choice. Here's Mrs. Rumble on the cheese to She's a Girl Scout through and through. Put your foot on the